today I'm going to look at how to use the while loop with the break statement and the continue statement. So let's open up a, well first of all let's go to the schedule, uh, click on any of these links and we're actually using the repetition and string formatting web page. Let's have a look at that. Uh, we're still on the while loop, so in my last movie I introduced the while loop. Um, we did a simple program that used the while loop. Uh, while uses a Boolean condition, which is either true or false, to determine whether it will print it or whether it will execute the statements which are indented beneath it or not. Um, I'll give you another example soon. And I talked about an infinite loop. One represents true. So if one will never change, true is always true in this case. So this statement will be executed forever until you uh, click on the close button of Python and kill that program. We saw that last in the last movie. Uh, now, this program is using the break statement. Now, this is the example program 05-05. <coughs> we can go and see that. Let's go back to, let's open up a new window here and go to my home page. Now, in my Python resources, this is uh, another link that you can use, uh, which has all the reference material for Python, uh, how to install Python, the example programs, and other resources for reference, and other links which you should be studying for Python 3 courses. And you'll see lots of different links here on the operator precedence, which we have a movie this week, how to use the plus operator, how to do input, what is an algorithm, Processing and selection, the if statement, um, all the topics that are covered on this course will be in this page without exception. So if at any time you're, you're looking for something, you can't find it, go to this page and search on this page. Okay, so now we I wanted to find the example programs, which are here. They're also on the schedule. Um, so the program I'm looking for is 0505, and there it is. So let's run this program. It shows you how to use a break statement to end an infinite loop. So let's copy this and go into Python. So let's open up. So we've opened up the Python idle to get to the shell. Now we're going to create a new file. I'm going to paste this code in. And let's save it as. Uh, now I could save it as its original name. So I'll save it on the desktop as 05-05.py. And press Enter. Right, now as I mentioned, one represents true. And in actual fact, any positive number would represent true. Uh, but let's just use one for true and zero for false. I could also substitute, instead of the word, uh, the number one, I could put the keyword true, and it would represent the same value. So here, but you will actually see while one in lots of example programs that you might find on my web pages and on the internet. So it's important to understand that while one means while true. And since true is always true, then this loop will repeat forever. So first of all, let's see what this does. So I'm going to run this code and it types spam. And not surprisingly here, it prints spam, print spam. Then we have an input, press Y to end this loop. So if you press lowercase y, this while loop will finish. Uh, before it finishes, it's going to say if answer, well, it's going to check if the answer is equal to 
lowercase y string and then print fries with that and then break. Break means it will break out of the loop. So break will immediately end this while loop and execution will continue at the lines immediately after the while loop. So if I say no, this or n for no, it will continue back at the top of the loop. So it prints spam again, asks you to press yes, press y to enter the loop, to end the loop. If the answer is equal to lowercase y, it will do this and then break. But if I enter any other character, then the loop will continue. So let's enter any other character and the loop continues. Now, if I enter the character lowercase y, then this will be true. It will print fries with that and then break out of the loop, which means that it will then execute the two lines after the loop, which is have a nice day. Right, so this is the use of the break statement as soon as Python sees the break statement, which is always on a line on its own, it will simply end the loop that it's in. And that means that it's going to jump down to the first line after the loop. And you'll know which one that one is because it's the first line that doesn't have any spaces. It's right at the beginning of the line. So the break will break out of the loop and then execute the lines following the loop. Let's run that again. Do a clean shell. So we run. Now this loop will execute forever unless you press lowercase y. If I press lowercase y, the loop ends. So this is a way that you can end a loop which is an infinite loop, a loop that continues forever using the break statement. Now there is another statement which is related to the break statement which is the continue statement. Now the continue keyword will continue the loop. It will simply go back to the top of the loop and continue. So let's change this program so it also uses continue. And let me, uh, let's see, uh, let's, before we end the loop, let's put in, uh, let's put in answer one is input and uh, do you want to go to beginning of loop of while loop. Now these of course are just examples of how the program statements work. Uh, this doesn't make a lot of sense if this was a real world program. But let's say if answer one is equal to, uh, let's say, lowercase y, or answer one is equal to uppercase y. Now you can either use single quotes or double quotes with strings, so I'm just putting that in just as an example. Then don't forget the colon that ends the uh, you must put the colon after this condition, which is either true or false. So this will either be true or false. If they answer lowercase y or uppercase y, this represents true. Then we will put the keyword continue. Notice continue is a keyword. It's in orange, just like or, if, while, and break. And... The difference between break and continue is continue will go to the top and continue the loop again. Break will leave the loop completely. So let's see how this works. 
So bear in mind that it's this loop is going to print the word spam. It's then going to do some input. It's going to say, do you want to continue? Do you want to go to the beginning of the while loop? So this is an input. So whatever is input will be assigned to the variable answer one. Answer one, of course, will be a string because input only ever input strings unless you change the data type. So if the answer is Y or uppercase Y, then continue means it will go back to the top of the loop and continue from there. Any other input will cause the next line to be executed. And then it's going to ask you to enter Y to end the loop if the answer is lowercase y. Now remember, you can either use a, a double quotes or single quotes. Um, in my next movie, or in another movie, I'm going to show you how to use triple single quotes uh, for when we are going to include test runs in our comments. That's a separate movie. So let's see this one run. So remember, continue. We'll go back to continue at the top of the loop again. Break. We'll leave the loop completely. And then execution begins at the first line after the loop. And we know which one that one is because it's the first line that has no spaces before the first character in the statement. So let's run this, see what it does. Oh, and I forgot to save, so I'll click OK. Right, so it prints spam, which is, not ex uh, which is exactly what we expected. And then it goes to this statement. Now here it's waiting for input. So it says, do you want to go to the beginning of the while loop? Now, if I say yes, it will go back to the beginning and print spam again. So let's say yes. So it goes back to the beginning, print spam again. It says, do you want to uh, go to the beginning of the while loop? I say yes. It goes back to the beginning. Now, if this time I say no, it will come down to this line here. And this line is press Y to end this loop. So this time I'm going to say no, and it says press Y to end this loop. Now, if I press Y, if the answer is Y, then it's going to print fries with that and then break. If I type in anything else, it will go back to the top of the loop and continue. So I'm going to say N. So it goes back to the top of the loop. And when it goes back to the top of the loop, it prints spam and then asks me if I want to go to the beginning of the while loop. So if I say yes, it goes to the beginning of the while loop and then prints spam. If I type anything else, if I type M, for example, that's not equal to Y. So it will ask me to press Y to end this loop. Press Y to end this loop. Now, if I do press lowercase y, it's going to print. This will be true. So it will print fries with that and then break out of the loop. After it breaks from the loop, it will end the execution of these last two lines saying, have a nice day. Fries with that, have a nice day. And there it is. So this little program illustrates how to use the while loop, which is an infinite loop We're using while one. One represents true. This loop will repeat forever until it, it comes across a break. The only time this loop will end is when it sees the first break. And then execution resumes at the first line after the while loop. Um, so here we've got keywords while or, if, continue, and break. Keywords are special words of the Python language. They're always, and, well, actually not always, because the keyword true has a capital letter T. Uh, usually they're lowercase and always in orange. These print input, these are built-in functions. These are functions of the 
Python language. Built-in functions have a task to do, and the task of print is to print, and the task of input is to input. Input a string. And variables are shown in black. Strings are in quote marks, either single or double quote marks, and always shown in green. Now, as long as you save your file with a name that ends in .py, you will see these colors. If by mistake you forget to put .py, then everything will be in black and white. So I'm going to leave it at that point. And the next movie I'm going to make is showing you how to, in, uh, how to put test runs. So that's testing your program and copying the output of your program into comments in the program file itself. And so I'm going to end it at this point now.